Alright, let's talk about converting from polar to rectangular, standard form, standard position form of vectors, and ij form. And you'll see how this kind of all ties in together. Alright, so I'm going to try and draw a nice, nice big picture here. Okay, so here's our standard x, y coordinate. So here's a point. Let's pick a point here. And uh, we could label that in xy form, right? So we've got an x, some x coordinate, some y coordinate gets you there. And then let's pick a different color here. If I draw a vector to that point, this is 90 degrees. Well, this is my v sub 1 and my v sub 2. So now I've got v sub 1, v sub 2, and uh, I could simply say that's the, the v sub 1 i plus the v sub 2 j. All those are the same thing. And then if I label this r and this theta, um, remember we call it theta hat when we do our standard position vectors, but I'm just going to call it theta right here, then I could say it also had coordinates of r and theta. So all of there's all different ways to describe the coordinates of this point right here. So you already know how to go from rectangular to vectors and ij, and you know how to go from vectors and ij back to rectangular, and now we're just going to add the polar piece right on here. And the polar piece is, um, well, let's just see what it is here. Okay, so to go from, let's see, the rectangular to, uh, to the polar, so that means you know your x, and you know your y, and then the r, of course, is going to be the square root. Whoa, that's crazy. Can do that. The square root there, a little better. Of x squared plus y squared looks familiar. And the theta, well that's going to be the tangent, inverse tangent, of the y over the x. Likewise, if I know my r and theta, then my x is going to be r cosine theta, and my y is going to be r sine theta. And um, we've already had that before. In our r, we called the we called that the magnitude of that vector. You know, the magnitude of vector v. We called that r. All right, let's do an example and um, put this to work. All right, so let's see an example here. So if change colors, example. If r is four and theta is three pi over two, and oh yeah, you could do this in um, you could do this in degrees or radians. We want to find the rectangular coordinates. That's the rectangular coordinates x and y. And let's just draw a little picture and figure out where we are. So 3 pi over 2, well that's down here. And a different color and 4 in that direction, that would be right there. So let's just see if um, if our formulas work and, and give us this. So x is the x coordinate, well that's going to be the r times the cosine of theta. So the r is 4. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. And that's what you expected. It's right down there. And then the y is going to be the r times the sine of 3 pi over 2. So that's going to be 4 times a negative 1, which gives me negative so my x coordinates are 0, negative 4. And like always, drawing this little mini picture here really helps um, really helps confirm that you've done your uh, arithmetic correctly.
Let's do another example. Now we've got rectangular coordinates, negative 3 and negative 2, and we want to find the equivalent polar coordinates. And before we start, let's draw a little picture. So negative 3, negative 2, there we are right there. So I like to do, I'm kind of used to drawing the vector, so this is actually technically just a point, but I like to draw the vector there. Okay, so third quadrant, and so let's first find r. Well, r is going to be the square root of negative 3 squared plus negative 2 squared. So that's going to be 9 plus 4, and I'll work that over here. And 9 plus 4 is 13, so that's going to be the square root of 13. So theta, right there, or theta hat, so theta is going to be our inverse tangent of the y over the x, and let's see, let's do this one in degrees. Okay, so when I punch that in my calculator, I get 33.7 degrees. Hmm, well, that doesn't look like it's in quadrant 3. It looks like it's in quadrant 1. Because a negative divided by negative is, is a positive, so when you put that in your calculator, the calculator doesn't know that that's quadrant 3. Alright, so here's the 33.7 over here. And the, equi the equivalent, let me change colors here. This angle here is the same as this angle over here. So now to get the correct angle, you take 180 degrees, you add your 33.7, and that gives you 213.7 degrees. But I could have used and made a polar coordinate out of this, couldn't I? So if I do inverse tangent and I get 33.7, so let me pick a different color, right up here, I could have simply said that r was in the negative direction. So let me go, let me go back and finish up this point right here in the, in the red. So the r was the square root of 13 and the angle was 2 13.7. Now let's change colors. But the magenta one, I could say, there's the magenta one, I could say, well, the angle was the 33.7, but the r was in the negative direction. So I could have said that that's negative square root of 3. So two different ways to express that, and you know from the other video that there's two additional ways to express that. You could have um, this angle here in the negative direction with a positive r, and then the other way would be to have this, should have changed colors there, that's okay, this negative angle there with the r in the negative direction. Recall there's four different ways to express coordinate, polar coordinates of the same point.